This is Wen Hafa National University of Defense Technology. And uh, our work is titled Towards Automatic and Precious Heat Layout Manipulation for General Purpose Programs. And uh, in recent years, heat based memory corruptions are becoming one of the threats to software and the computer system. So heat layout manipulation is key to exploit a heat based vulnerability, which means placing a target object to a target position in the heap. Given a crash input of a heap vulnerability, manipulating heap layout could be regarded as digging or filling holes via heap primitives. And a hole is a free chunk in the heap memory, which are linked by chains. And the hole in the chain must be allocated by specific order. Digging a hole is to add one free chunk in the chain, and the filling a hole is to consume the free chunk in the target chain. Here we show a chain with holes, and we need to fill D holes in the chain to occupy the target hole. To occupy the target hole within primitives, we need two steps. Firstly, we try to figure out which primitives and how many invocations of them and the second step is how to sort the primitives by specific order. However, for general purpose programs, it's not easy. There are mainly three challenges. The first one is how to identify primitives preciously in general purpose programs with complex program logic. Current proposals use static methods to extract primitives, but it is not precious enough to analyze the parameters of each heap operation. Also, it, it cannot track heap operations in third-party libraries. So the second challenge is how to dig or fill holes with primitive capabilities. So the capability of primitive measures how many holes the primitive can create or fill in the target chain. If a primitive could dig n holes, the capability is minus n, and if the primitive could fill n holes, the capability is n. Since most primitives in general purpose programs contain more than one heap operations and uh, they are sort of dependent with each other, how to leverage primitives to fill D holes in the target chain is a challenge. Finally, it is important to deal with side effects. The side effects during manipulation results from the design of allocators which means that the same heap operation may lead to different results and different heap states. We use these two pictures to illustrate the side effects. In the above picture, allocating hex 200 bytes chunk will occupy one hole of the chain without side effects, but sometimes allocating hex 100 bytes chunk could also consume a hole from the chain. This situation is regarded as side effects. So to tangle the challenges mentioned before, we briefly introduce our insights. Firstly, we design a heap operation dependence graph to identify primitives preciously, which is constructed by dynamic fuzzing. The nodes of the graph are heap operations, and the edges are data flows and control flows. Secondly, we extend the heap primitives capability. Third, we formulate the manipulation process as an integer linear programming model, which aims to finding a series of primitives satisfying the manipulation demands and the execution logic. The ILP model contains constraints and the objective function. We regard the invocation amounts of primitives as a variable to be solved and find all feasible solutions within constraints. Then we leverage objective function to get the optimal one. The high level workflow of our work Agua is shown in the figure. It first identifies previous from target program and analyzes the constraints from execution logic. Then it models the capability of primitives within basic capability and extended capability. Additionally, we set up the ILP model and uh, handle side effects to output the primitive triggers. Then we sort the primitives with specific order and uh, generate primitive sequence. 
and uh, finally generate exploit to verify the previous sequence. Firstly, we introduce how to identify primitives. We identify the primitives and the collect constraints from heap operation dependence graph, which is constructed by customized father. Based on the graph, we first locate the anchor node in the graph. The anchor node is the entry of the loop structure in the program. Then we identify the entry nodes, which are successors of the anchor node and the heap operations between two entry nodes belong to the same primitive. In this graph, we could extract totally three primitives. After that, we collect the constraints from the execution logic. We extract the having default relationship among the primitives by locating the entry nodes in the dominant tree. For example, in the figure, the primitive three relies on the primitive one. Next, we introduce the capability modeling part. The capability of a primitive measures how many holes the primitive can create or fill in the target chain. We model basic capability and extended capability for each primitive. The basic capability reside regards the effect of the heap operation is deterministic. For example, Allocating hex to 200 bytes chunk is supposed to decrease one hole in the target chain, and the basic capability is minus one. As for the extended capability, it considers all situations under different heap states. As shown in the right picture, the allocation of hex 200 bytes could increase one hole in the target chain within specific heap state, and the capability is one. The extended capability relies on features of allocator and the specific heap state. Next, we introduce the integer linear programming to figure out which primitives and how many of them are triggered for manipulation. We leverage the ILP to formulate the manipulation process. The constraints of ILP contain two types. One is from target layout which means using primitives to occupy holes until reaching the target hole. We construct the equation where C represents the capability. T is the evocation amount of primitives and D is the number, to be number of holes to be filled. The other type of constraints is from execution logic, including the having before relationship and the limitation of invocation times. Sometimes we might get multiple feasible solutions by solving the constraints. To facilitate the procedure of exploit generation, we define an objective function to output the optimal solution. So the design is that the optimal solution tends to be easier to generate exploit when a solution contains less primitives and they are more frequently triggered during the fuzzing. Next, we illustrate two methods of dealing with side effects in manipulation, which is an important part of our work. The first method is eliminating the side effects by adding primitives. Specifically, we first analyze the causes of side effects based on the modeling of allocators. Then we turn dealing side effects to a new digging or feeding problem and establish new constraints, just as shown in the below. In the new equation, C prime means new capability, and the third T is the number of primitives to deal with side effects. Besides, to ensure the added primitives don't affect the original target hole, and we establish this equation. Finally, we add the new equations to original constraints set and get new solutions by solving new constraints. In some cases, the first method based on basic capability is incapable of finding a solution, since adding more constraints could make it unsolvable. Besides, if we want to place the target object into a larger target hole, the basic capability cannot achieve that. In this case, we extend the capability to handle the side effects. Compared to the following method, we use extended capabilities to set up the constraints. Since the extended capability C could be different value, 
we are able to construct many sets of constraints and effectively e expand the solution space. Therefore, we could find more feasible solutions based on the extended solution space. After determining which primitives and how many invocations of the Next, we sort them by specific order to generate printing sequence. Considering that if too many allocations are put to the front of the sequence, the target hole will be already occupied before allocating the target object, just as shown in the picture. Assume that the printing four is supposed to occupy the target hole, but printing three allocates the target hole before printing four in the sequence with blue line. Hence, to avoid this situation, we propose an algorithm. We propose a fluctuation with based sorting algorithm, and our core insight is to keep the D decreases smoothly to avoid early occupation. To evaluate our project, we set up experiments within the following settings. We collect 27 bucks of 12 general, general purpose programs from public websites, and all bugs are heap based vulnerabilities, which could be reproduced and exploitable. The allocator is PDMLock, which is widely used in Unix platform. We show part of the evaluation results in the table and list the details of manipulation results. From the table, we list six bugs from different programs, including heap overflow of by one, use of free, and double free. The third column shows the number of primitives extracted by bug one, and the next column shows two types of constraints of extracted primitives, which are invocation number limitation and happen before relationship. Primitives in Python and PHP are in independent, while primitives in other programs are restricted by program execution logic. Excuse me, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yes, your time is now officially up. So it would be okay, good okay, if you okay. could I will. just skip to the... Okay, I will finish my slides. <laughs> we can also find how the bug will handle the side effects during manipulation. The first three bugs leverage target objects to occupy one larger hole, and we leverage method two to extend the capability to handle side effects. As for a log bug, we leverage method one to eliminate the side effects. As for last two bugs, since primitives in Python and PHP have strong manipulation capability, could, the manipulation. Could you just go to the conclusions because you're keeping everybody from lunch? Okay, okay. Uh, Let's talk about our conclusion and uh, our framework Bagua could achieve automatic manipulation for general purpose programs, which is a key step of automated exploit generation. And uh, to facilitate the automatic, the automatic exploitation, uh, we still need some, some following work. We need to apply more allocators, especially for certain customized allocator in your applications. Moreover, it is important to improve code coverage to identify more primitives. And uh, that's all. Thanks for your listening. Uh, my question is, how do you s position your uh, work uh, in the big picture of uh, wheeled machine programming? Or, or you can think of as uh, autom automatic expert generation to some extent. OK, uh, our, uh, our work is, aims to automatic uh, manipulating the heap layouts. And uh, I think your problem of how to automatic generate the exploit uh, is uh, is a very difficult is a, is is a difficult part in the in the work and uh, we and we achieve this uh, uh, and uh, uh, some uh, some of our evaluation experiments we achieve we achieve automatic call generating the uh, uh, the input uh, but in some programs we cannot. Uh, Automatically generates all the all the inputs, so we just uh, manually generating the inputs to verify our printing sequence. And uh, our goal is to achieve achieving an automatic 
uh, manipulation and uh, the, to generate the exploit is just to verify our uh, hip, hip primitive sequence. Thank you.